Hey guys, welcome to the next fucking installment of the Shaco Guard. Now, that's what I would say, or well, that would be my intro, right, if I was a fucking gimp, but I don't think we are, okay? So, let, why don't we go with, um, uh, what the fuck is going on? Alright? How are you lads doing? Yeah, you good? Alright, let's go. Um, so yeah, uh, a few people were saying the last uh, Shaco guy, the part one master guy, was a bit too long. It was 30 minutes and wasn't really structured. I completely agree with you guys. It was shit. No, it wasn't shit, but it could have been a lot more fluid. Okay, so I've got a, I've devised a structure for this video. All right, do you guys want to hear it? Okay, here we go. So what we're going to be going through, skill order, which shouldn't take long at all. And then we're going to go through playing from behind, which is more like a general concept and although it is pertinent to Shaka, of course, because Shaka is a fucking champion league, there are some things that are just like more macro than micro. Because on Shaka, like everything stays the same, right? Like his mechanics and shit like that. But it's just the idea of playing from behind and how to play from behind more than what to do on that champ from when you're behind, if that makes sense. So that's what I'm going to be uh, doing second. So skill order. Then we're going to be talking about playing from behind. And third, okay, what you guys have been waiting for. The grand finale, the grand finale, the grand finale, uh, the mechanics on Shaka. How do you guys become a fucking master at the actual champion mechanically? Yeah, so my uh, my motto, or whatever, if I coach people, is it's how you play and not who. But this part of the video, which is, I guess, the most interesting, is how do you play that champ? What to play? You know what I mean? It's not like your macro thing, it's more the micro. How, what you, little things you do on champions, little intricacies you need to know if you're going to master a champ. Not just for Shaka, any champion, yeah? But obviously for this video, we will be focusing on the Demon Jester. Like that. Don't worry about that. Some people will get that, some people won't. Anyway. Um, so yeah, let's, uh, let's get right into it. Now, your skill order, okay? Now, you're going to see a table kind of thing on your screens now, right? of an op.gg thing I'm looking at on my uh, second monitor. And we have the pick, weight, pick, pick weight, the pick rate, and the win rates, all right? Now, you see the bottom one is the highest one. That is the skill order of the Korean Shaco guy who runs the experience, Quint. Now, I'm hoping you've all watched the last video so you know what I'm talking about. He runs the um, experience, Quint, and that's what he goes. Okay, now, when he gets um, buffed, which it is in the next patch, okay, you guys can research that yourselves, I, I'm guessing the skill order is going to be a lot like the third one, the one in the middle. And I reckon that win rate will, will be even better. So all the win rates are very good, and I don't really want to go too much into this, but I think that every single one of those is viable. The thing that I would kind of think about, though, is that if you're... Like, the first three levels are obvious. You always go Q, you always go WQE, right? Normally. Or WEQ, one of them. You, you have all three skills at level three, right? Then it's kind of just what you prefer. I would honestly go, I'd honestly max Q level 4, like put one more level in it, but it honestly depends, like if you're about to uh, gank someone, right, and you don't need two points in Q, obviously you max E, you put another point in E. If you are about to gank someone, but you need a bit more time in, in stealth to put a box down or whatever, then obviously put another point in your Q, but honestly, I like to save them. So when you're playing, don't actually max, um, level up that ability. I'd honestly just save it until you need it, until you know you actually need that ability. Because there might be a time when you're ganking bot lane, for example, and the lane's kind of push, and you need to put three points in Q just to get there, so you've got three seconds to do it. Otherwise, like, ganking bot lane is kind of hard if you're in tri-bush or whatever, so hopefully you guys can visualize that. I don't really have any, um, uh, you know, explicit examples of me doing it. Um, I actually went through all my streams and couldn't really find, uh, you know, me actually doing it. But it just depends on the scenario, okay? It's all situational. If you guys feel like you want to pull off a gank, you need three seconds. Obviously, when you're level five, put another point in queue. But honestly, like generally, I think the last one is really, really good. Um, but all of them are viable. I think all of them are viable. Um, but uh, generally, like I think you want to put more points in queue if you're going to gank early. And if you're just going to farm and just wait until you hit tear map mid game or whatever, then two to three points in E, I'm guessing, is fine, especially when the next. Um, the next uh, Shaco bus come out to his E. Alright, so that, that's legit it for the skill order, okay? So hopefully that was nice and succinct and we got through that without, without any fuck-ups. Um, playing from behind. Now, this is a concept that, it's really just a concept, okay? There's no, like, what to do when you're behind. These are the fucking things you have to do when you're behind. There are a couple of things, but it's more just, like, how you go about doing it. Especially on Shaco as well. So I said earlier, like, you know, generally, like, you know, when you're behind on any champ, you want to, um, you know, you know, ward, you want to try and just get map control and vision, um, try and get picks, 
like you know you, all, all five of you just group in a, in a bush near drake and you know just play for drake if you get a pick you get dragon or something like that you guys just have to play really smart and try and anticipate what they're going to do so when you're behind of course what they're what the enemy's going to do is try and invade your jungle ward your jungle get deep wards and all this stuff you can catch them out doing that okay but that's an that's one tip i'd suggest is just anticipate their movement and always ward just try and get as many wards out as you can okay so on shaka i would not go red trinket if you're behind if you if you go red sweeper story at like level 9 10 i don't think it's worth you need as many wards out as you can as you can when you're behind and i guess the only other thing like everyone talks about like assassin shaka when you're behind it shit it really isn't in my opinion like i've had a couple of games and maybe i'll probably go back actually and check those games if you go assassin shaka when you're behind you can kill still kill every ADC. Okay, you can still kill every ADC if you play it right. Okay, you guys just have to trust me now. And I'm actually going to show you a couple of clips of me one v one in ADCs when they're so far ahead. Okay, when they're like ten and one, and you can still one v one them on Assassin Shaco. And as I said before, it's about anticipating where they're going to be. All right. All right, guys. So this is the only clip, legit, the only clip I could find of me being like slightly behind that we were able to still 1v1 the ADC with and almost kill them. You guys have to realize that on Shaka, when you go Assassin, you have so much single target damage, even if you are behind. Like, we're talking like mid-game here, so when you have a Shiv, Tiamat, I think I might have as well, uh, and maybe another item. Yeah, we have the Warrior Enchantment, of course, Ninja Tarbis. But, like, you can see from this, right, the Draven's 5-3-1, he's got a PD, he's got an IE, he's got Berserker, he's even got an Executioner's Calling, right? This means he is very, very strong right now. Being Draven, he's going to be hard as fuck to kill, right? Not just for me, but for anyone, okay? He's going to be hard as fuck to kill. He's got lifesteal. He's got 1v1, you know, like damage mitigation from the PD. But we can still 1v1 him on Shaco. First of all, because we have Ignite, okay? That's going to reduce all his healing. And because we just have the mechanics to do it. Like, you guys have to fucking trust yourselves. If you are behind, right? Another thing I want to talk about is if uh, making a play like this is better than not making a play and just fucking sitting in base and just, you know, I don't know, just farming your jungle or something like that. It doesn't do anything. You guys have to try and make plays when you guys are behind to try and get back in the game. Otherwise, you're just going to you're just gonna be sitting in base doing absolutely nothing unless you have, like, I don't know, an Anivia you can turtle behind or someone like that. Like, it's very, very rare you're ever going to do that on Shaco because you're just wasting time. Like... When you guys have these items, first of all, like Shiv, Tiamat, Warrior, you guys have a lot of damage, especially with, especially to a single target, as I alluded to before. You guys have to try and make a play here, right? Now, we're going to see the 1v1 right here. Now, even though we don't kill him, we are half health after the 1v1, even after he uses everything and whatever he flashes as well. We're half health. He's on, like, 200 health. Yeah? So you guys have to just be fucking confident. Just grow a pair and just fucking try and make a play. When you're behind, yeah, just try and do anything you can to come back and try and win. Whether that be queuing over Baron Pit to try and steal it, whether it be queuing in to try and steal an Infernal Drake, whether it be I don't know, um, you know, uh, just one v oneing someone, just anticipating where the ADC is going to be, just trying to one v one one of their team to try and get something going for your team, just by the by the team time to get back in the game. Now you're going to see the end of this clip. Oh, LeBlanc doesn't actually kill this guy. And I don't want to trash talk, but she's a typical OCE diamond player and she doesn't get the kill. Anyway, I don't really want to trash talk anyone. But yes, you should have got the kill at the end, which would have given us an assist, a chance to get back in the game. Not really get back in the game, but give us a platform to build from, so to speak, okay? So you guys are going to see the 1v1 right now, right? So we queue in, put a box down, anticipating his movement where he's going to be. We, I altered there because I thought, okay, there are a few things here in this 1v1 I want you guys to to know about, but we'll just play the clip on and we'll see LeBlanc here comes in, she says she W's over and doesn't kill him somehow. Now, and the reason I didn't go in that bush then was obviously because of Blitz, and we have no ward in there, I don't actually know where he is, okay? Now, it may be if, you know, I should have gone in there in hindsight, of course I should have, but I obviously didn't know that. Now, there are a few things, okay? And this 1v1 that I want to kind of talk to you guys about. And this isn't just from playing from behind. This is just Shaco generally. And this will lead nicely into the um, mechanics actually. So that's pretty much it though guys for playing from behind. You guys just have to try and do something like make a play on Shaco in a 1v1. Or just try and ward out the enemy. Anticipate their movement. And this is another thing we did here. We saw Draven was farming mid. Okay. And we just backed ourselves to kill him with Ignite. 
Okay, we just backed ourselves. We said, okay, so Draven's farming mid. We can queue through lane, which is normally when you want to queue. We'll go through that a bit, a bit more in depth later. And we're going to try and assassinate him. Because 1v1, we have Red Smite, we have Ignite, we have a clone as well who can help us out. And we're going to do this. We're going to try and do this. this is what you, you can't just sit back and let them make the mistakes. Because once you get higher in ELO, right, they're not going to make mistakes. You guys just have to make a play to try and get back in the game. Anyway, in this 1v1, you guys are going to see me. First of all, put a box down when I'm invisible. And trying to anticipate the Draven's movements or force him into an area that a teammate's coming. Or say, forcing him into a turret or something like that. That's where our box placement will be. But I'll, I'll, just, I'll go through this a bit more in depth as well later. We also want to E as late as possible. Why? Because your E does more damage the lower they are. Okay? So we want to save our E as late as possible. And another reason why is because it's a form of DC. Right? And it's our only form of C at the moment. Okay? So if we E him early, it slows him for what? Barely anything. And he uses his W and he probably gets out. We barely even get an order off. If we E him later, not only is it going to do more damage, but it gives us an opportunity to gap close. Yeah, it gives us an opportunity to get to him. He gets out like he kind of did. Now, the reason I couldn't get to him was because he flashed and did whatever else and was so far away from us. But that's what you guys are going to be thinking about. And we also used our ult, okay, to try and dodge his W that I don't think he actually used. But we'll watch that again. But I, I used my ultimate there, anticipating his um his E, sorry, okay, to try and dodge it. And then we can, you know, go on him again, right? But unfortunately, he flashed and, and got out. But we played this as well as we could have. And this is what you guys have to do when you're behind. You have to make plays. Even if you're ahead, I would have made exactly the same play. Okay, you're Assassin Shaka. You have to play like one at all stages if you're behind. Early game, mid game, whatever. You guys just have to play like one. You do so much single target damage. You're running the Assassin Mastery, I'm guessing. Okay, we have the Red Smite, Ignite. You guys just have to try and blow someone up to get your team, buy your team time. Or maybe you can do an objective or something like that off it. You have to play aggressive. So we'll watch it again here, right? Now, so we're going to queue in, obviously, through lane so he doesn't see us. We're going to box behind him. So we ignite him early here so he doesn't, you know, become fucking full health at the end. And he even heals as well. Okay, and we, we eat him late as well. So hopefully you guys saw us or, um, or we eat him there a bit late and put him down to like 200 HP. So he burned both summoners then, right? Both summoners for that, which in my opinion, like, is is 100% worth it. LeBlanc should have got the kill as well. If she was good, she would have killed. But hopefully you guys can, you know, vision what you have to do when you're behind. You guys just have to make a play and be ballsy, all right? I would rather go out with a fight, yeah, putting up a fight, than go out, you know, withering away your face, fucking moaning about the team. Just trying to make a play, okay? But that would be my how to play from behind on Shaco. Obviously, I'd love to have more clips, but I haven't really been streaming for that long. And this wasn't even from stream. I actually even went back through the games on replay to try and find something. This was all I could find because I don't want to sound conceited, but I haven't really been behind that often on Shaka. Okay? And even if we are behind, it's normally the team that's behind and we'll be like 10 and 4. The whole team will be going neg. Right? Anyway, that's going to lead me into the mechanics. All right? So let's get into that. Right guys, so now we get into the interesting bit, alright? What you've all been what you've all been waiting for. Let's get the fucking hands warm. Okay, mechanics, alright? Now there's gonna be seven parts. Are you guys ready to hear it? Here we go. Boxes, box placement, diving, people under turrets, Q. Using your Q to assassinate people. Where to use it from? Securing objectives with Ian Smite. That what your combo is for securing Drake or Baron. Okay? Using your E as late as possible. Okay, so pretty much your combo when you try and assassinate someone, yeah? Using your R to deceive and using your R to dodge. Two different concepts that are both very, very useful to know. And if you can implement both at the right time, showing a bit of expediency, yeah? You guys might have to Google that word. You guys will become a god. You guys will become the fucking goat. All right, so let's get into the boxes. Right, you vegetables, are you ready? Right, so box placement, okay? Number one. Okay, the first mechanical fucking tip, trick or whatever. Okay, now this is relevant when you're ganking, if you're in a skirmish, if you're invading someone. Okay, we're going to see some examples here of using your fucking box effectively. Okay, and we ain't talking, I don't want to finish that off because I'll probably get banned. But anyway, so this clip here, let's run through it. Okay, we're, this is how to execute a gank, putting a box in the fucking lane. Okay, this is a really, really nice. 
So we're going to gank bot lane, okay, which is on, so we're red side. We're going to gank bot through their bottom tri bush, okay? So the blue side tri bush, they don't know we're there. So how do we execute this gank effectively? How do we kind of ensure we get the two kills? The box placement, placement, placement is the key. The box placement is the key here, okay? So with Shaco, a lot of his stuff, a lot of his kit, you have to kind of anticipate what the enemy is going to do. So when you're ganking, you kind of have to think, well, they're obviously not going to fight you, are they? So they'll try and escape. Where are they going to escape to? Where are they going to path? Where are they going to go? What's the most likely path they go? Okay, and that's, that will determine where you put the box. So when you gank bot lane, for example, normally you want to put it in maybe one of the bottom bushes, or if there's not a creep wave there, of course, because otherwise the creep wave will activate the boss box and he won't get feared, no CC, you can't gap close or whatever. You want to try and put it where they're going to go. Okay, so obviously not really in a creep wave because it will get activated. You want to kind of put it somewhere where, where it won't get activated, but they'll run into it kind of thing. So we'll see a perfect example here. So let's just play this red hot clip. So we queue over the wall and we see them here, right? And that box right there, like, a, it's pretty, like, the, the clip will speak for itself, but you guys see how effective that box was. And the rest of the clip doesn't really matter. Like, we get a kill on Kate, so I can't even be fucked showing that. But we're going to show it again here. So before I even come into lane here, I'm thinking, yeah, you can see, oh, I don't know if you guys will see the head, but the head on the stream, okay, my head, is thinking, where am I going to put this box? Okay, where am I going to put this box? And as I said earlier, you want to think about... Where is it going to be activated if I put it? Will a creep wave activate it? So you don't really want to put it in the middle of the lane. You want to ideally put it in this bot lane in one of the bushes. Or if they go through river, obviously in river, maybe even if in tri bush in certain situations. Box placement is the key here, fam. Securing the kill on Bard. Otherwise, I might have to ignite him or whatever. And we don't really want to waste a summoner spell. So box placement is key. But when I'm coming here, I'm looking at this and thinking, oh my god, you know, that one of them's going to run down here. And what the key is here, is here, right? When we put the box in that bush, we want to try and push them into it. So it's not just us putting a box down, yeah, we go in, yeah, they're going to run into it all the time because it won't happen. You guys have to try and force them into it. So us staying the top side of Bard here will force him to stay low, if that makes sense. We'll force him to stay on the lower side of the map, right, close to the wall, yeah? Because he's not going to run up, is he? Because that's just going to give us, you know, a free kill. So he's going to try and run back to turret. And what's the quickest way? The way he's going to go. Okay, so we have to try and anticipate this pathing and we put the box where he's going to run. Okay, pretty simple. And as we see here, he runs straight into it. We don't even have to ignite. Beautiful. He wastes his horse as well. Okay, so that's one example, okay? How to execute a gank with your box effectively. Now this next clip. All right, so reversing Kled the sped. Kled with the bad head. And the key we're here with using the box is warding him off, okay? Affecting his pathing again. So you're gonna see when we, you know, get in like midway through the skirmish, we're gonna queue and we're gonna put a box down. And when he sees that box, he's thinking to himself, shit, I can't actually go that way because I'm gonna get feared and definitely die. It forces him another way, okay? So he doesn't actually get feared by the box, I don't think, even if he does, it's irrelevant. But the key here is to kind of ward him off and make sure it's almost just securing a kill. Yeah, this box. So let's watch the clip here. So he comes in on us here, we ult or whatever, he's um he's a uh, Lasso the clone, and we put a box down the way to his turret. The safest way for him to go if the box wasn't there. We put that there to say, look mate, you know you can't go that way. You're not gonna go that way. You have to go somewhere else. And we end up getting the kill because of it. Okay? So we'll watch one more time. So when I queue here, I'm thinking, oh okay, so our box is off cooldown now, or has just come off cooldown. Where would we where do we want to put it? You know what I mean? Because we're probably not going to kill him, right, if we don't put it down. So we put it down there to say, if you go through here, you're going to die. And it forces him another way and we get the kill anyway, right? So that's a nice little other, other example. Now, this one here is a dive bot lane. This is us using our W effectively because, first of all, in this clip, I'll just give you a bit of context. The Warwick is alive, the enemy jungler, and I'm thinking if Warwick comes, okay, he might come through Tribush or he might come through, you know, down through the lane down the bot lane. And I'm thinking to myself, if he does come, where can I put a box that will stop him from, or it might like just hold him, from coming in and holding or flash fearing or whatever he does. What's gonna be, where can I put that box to, to help him out? Because this Lucian's gonna die. You guys can see his health, he's on like 450, 500 health. And he's pretty much, a, he's gonna die. I've got my ult ignite. There's no way he's gonna get out. But what about Warwick? What about if Warwick comes? What are we gonna do here? 
So let's play the clip. So we put the box there. Now, in hindsight, I could have actually probably put that like a bit closer to Tribush, but as you see, this works out fine. Okay, this is just an example to see how you can do it. And of course, in hindsight, a bit closer to Tribush would have been perfect. But Warwick comes through bot lane, okay, walks straight into the box. It's form of CC. He's slowed down. We can eat him. We've got Ignite as well. And he's going to die because of it. All right, so let's watch it one more time. So box goes down. So I'm not even worried about this Lucian. The Lucian's dead. What I, in my mind is I'm thinking, if the enemy jungler comes in, what are we going to do? Yeah, can we kill this guy as well? And we see him come in here. He gets feared. He gets so fucking greedy. Like, Jesus. OC Warwick right there, fam. I bet legit, though. It's all about anticipation, mate, on Shaco and his boxes, okay? So you saw it bot lane. You saw it in the clay clip. Where's he going to go? And in that one as well. Where's the jungler at? Where's he going to come from? Right. Now, this next clip is us invading and using the box again to secure two kills. All right. So obviously in this clip, like I don't really need to say that much. We'll just play it here. So Lee Sim, we find Lee Sim. We steal his red buff. We queue into that bush and put a box down. And what this is doing, okay, now you can't actually see it on the map, but uh, I think it's a TF mid. I think that's right. Is the other side of the Rafe bush wall, the chicken bush wall. So he's kind of warding that area off and he's pretty much saying, you know, Lee Sin or Yasuo, if you come over here, I'm going to stun Kaiji. We're going to get at least one. Okay, so it kind of forces them into into going into this bush here, right? To try and get to their second tier turret or in their lane so they're safe from me. I realize that, okay? That's just about you guys realizing it and you know, having map awareness or whatever. Queuing into that bush and putting a box down, and it's also set, it's kind of like locking them in an area. Yeah, now our top lane isn't here, but you can see Jax on the minimap coming down. And it's pretty much saying if you want to get out, you have to, one of you is going to die, definitely. But if you want to get out, you're going to have to sacrifice one of you. And it's just giving us... Two free kills, pretty much. Yeah, this box placement. So, just a bit of map awareness, just knowing where to go, where to put the box. There's even more so here, like where to actually queue to. And putting the box down in here just secures two kills, right? We get one level up here. Kill the Yasser there. Now, the last clip as well. This is actually one of my favorite clips. Um, and the reason is because um, this was like one of those kiting situations for Shaka where I didn't have a chance to blow any of them up because they were all grouped. And if I go in, I just die and try one of them. I don't really want to do. But we're going to see here that I actually kind of bait them. because So I'm kind of locking them in already by being on this top side of the map. I'm kind of locking them into this like barren area, the river area. Right? But I get kind of caught out by LeBlanc. As we're going to see here, I get a bit too cocky. I even dropped a laugh before that, I think. But LeBlanc's going to double chain us with her ultimate. And we have to queue out. Put a box down. It's exactly the same situation as Lan Yasso, yeah, right? And because our box is a form of CC, we can almost pick up a double kill her because of it. All right. So the box is, even though like it's probably your weakest thing, like you max it last, it can still be really effective in situations like that. So hopefully that was informative. Now let's go on to the, ne the next one. Right guys, let's go. Turret diving, number two. I didn't actually realize that this was already like 23 minutes long, okay? So let's, let's fucking motor through this, right? Turret diving, this shouldn't take long. Turret diving is very, very simple. Most of the time, all the time pretty much on Shaco, if you have a 3v2, if you outnumber the enemy at a turret, especially if it's a squishy, all you have to do is press R. That's legit it. You just press E from range and you just wait until your R blows up until they're low, which they probably already are because you're diving them or whatever. But all you have to do is just press R, let the R do the work. It, it will proc team out as well. You just have to E them under turret and they'll eventually die. It's not really like a master thing on Shaco, but most Shacos don't do it. All Shacos really do is just Q through lane and that's it. If you can, you can dive someone so easy on Shaco and pick up kills, snowball off them, but people need to do it a bit more, I think. And if it's not even like mastering, it's not even that hard to do. Just press R, let the R do the work, and just eat them. So let's go through the clips here. So the first one is on this Nami, okay, in the bot lane. So we're going to kill their Sivir. And we we understand that this Nami is a squishy. She's a support. And we have everything up. We have team out first of all. We have smite. We have knight. We have our ultimate, which just gives us a free kill on that Nami, okay? Not really much else to say to that. Just understanding the situation. She's a support. We have all our thumbs up. Just dive her if she's on her own. Nice and easy. Next one is on a Renekton top, okay, so we realize this guy, so we run into this guy, we get stunned by him, probably should have altered his stun, but it's all good, so he, we run into him here, he stuns us and whatever, now for some reason he ease back into his turret, if he, if he just eased out through the lane there, back to his nexus, he would have been fine, but the clone tanks, so Yorick comes in, does a does enough damage, and we just queue him, QE, easy, get the kill, job done. Uh, this one here, what one's this? Uh... Okay, this is diving a Caitlyn bot. Sorry, a bit of a pause. I had to actually realize that I just saw Cassiopeia. Now, anyway, 
So the K gets it too greedy. All we have to do is just press R. Phone does all the work, gets the kill for us. So easy. And the last one is the bot lane as well. So we Q over the wall here. We put a box in the tribe bush in case that jungler comes. Okay, remember what I told you guys earlier? So we're going to E Jinx from range. We're just going to ultimate so we don't take a turret hit. Clone just does everything. We ignite the Jinx from range and we just chill. We legit just chill and let the clone do the work. How easy is that? Didn't really take long at all, that. Right, let's get on to the next one. Right, guys, this is probably the most interesting one. Probably the most fun and entertaining one of all. Using your Q effectively, yeah? to kind of anticipate yeah where they're going to be that's probably the key fam okay with this queue you guys need to anticipate where the carry or whatever you whoever you're trying to assassinate is going to be so farming lane they're probably going to farm a solo lane especially like when mid game starts okay so when the outer turrets go down the game's going to open up a bit which is great for you now where you queue is kind of key okay now normally you don't really want to queue from bushes or in the jungle because it's probably going to be watered so where do you want to queue from the lanes Okay, in most of these clips, maybe in all, I'm, I can't really remember where I queue from, but in most of these clips, you guys are going to see me queue from a lane or from a safe place, which I know is never going to be warded in a million years. What does that do? It means, first of all, they don't know we're there, they're completely unaware, and just lets us queue in and get off a full combo, okay? Even if they survive, we did as much as we could, all right? So where you queue from is key, and as I said, like I've alluded to on stream before, the 10 seconds before you actually kill them, so most people will see Shaco right, assassinate someone, they'd go, oh my god, dude, this this fucking build is so OP, this, this champ is broken, you know, let's nerf him, you know, that's probably what Riot thinks, so they fucking just nerf him into the ground, but the goat, yeah, your fucking boy, finds a fucking way, okay, to, to fucking beat the system, alright, and I'm gonna keep finding ways, <laughs> alright, anyway, the 10 seconds before you actually go in and do your combo and blow them up is the key, Okay, and in those 10 seconds, what are you thinking about? Were you thinking about, first of all, where are you going to put the box? Where are you going to queue from? Yeah, and then what? how are you actually going to like combo? Yeah, because you've got to save your E, can you just blow them up? Have I got to dodge anything? Stuff like that. The 10 seconds before it is what makes the assassination, what makes the kill. Okay, so let's go through some of these clips using your Q effectively to kill someone. Now, first clip here, this is an interesting clip as well, so I'm going to show you a bit longer before the actual assassination, show you guys what I mean. But this clip here, right, I see Lucian and Sona there, I'm just thinking, okay, this Lucian, what does he want to do? So this bot lane is probably going to shove out and he might come bot, and I think I actually see him path bot here, which I do, okay. So I see him path here, and I'm like, okay, if I can queue through this bush, which it might be water, but if it isn't, he's a kill, and we get the kill on him. Okay, so that was about anticipating where he's going to be, seeing his pathing, and queuing from a safe place and getting the kill. Uh, the next clip here actually like kind of just won us the game here. So there's a bit of a, you know, we're, we're kind of, you know, just like eyeing each other up, both teams, and I'm, you know, they're trying to find out where I am, trying to scout. So I run through, this is another clip through lane, okay? And I'm thinking, if I queue through lane here, we see Cogmore on the mini-map farming mid, and because my queue lasts 5 seconds at level 5, I can actually go through mid, which we obviously do, and blow him up here. Okay, so the combo is the easy part. Killing them is the easy part. It's the 10 seconds beforehand. All right. Now, next clip, this is what I want to show you guys as well. So we joined this fight a little bit late. But what I'm looking at here, most people would just look at that fight and think, oh, my God, bro, let's just fucking, you know, help them at the fight. I'm thinking, carry, ADC. Where is their ADC? I'm a single target. I'm focusing on a single target. I'm going to blow them up, you know, with my setup because that's what we are, Assassin's Tracker. 1v1 and will, will beat anyone, especially ADCs. So in this clip here, I have to play it again for myself, I might have to play it again for you guys. I'm thinking, where is their fucking Kate going to be? Yeah, Where is their Kate going to be? My eyes are on Kate at all times here. Alright, so instead of queuing into Bard and Cat, whoever else was there, we kill Kate, get her out of the way when that's easy. Alright, so focusing on that single target, not going in for like a big team fight or whatever because it might get, you know, a bit, a bit uh, fucking, you know, a bit messy. We focus on the Kate and we get the kill nice and easy. Now this clip here, so the team's uh, team's doing really well. We're 13 and 2. <laughs> and what we're going to do here, so we're actually behind. This is actually a nice clip for, for you guys who are thinking, oh, you know, what to do if you're behind. So we're actually in a 4v5 right now, I think. Okay, so 4v5, what am I thinking? Oh, fuck it. I'm, first of all, I'm thinking, fuck this GP. Yeah, he's put, me in a, put us in a precarious position here. So I'm going to try and get us out of it. I'm going to try and make a play because we're behind. Okay, so we're going to queue through our lane where our inhib is, which is never going to be watered. Okay, otherwise our turret would sit. We just go on corky and kill him because we knew he was bot because he was farming. And we're all, what we're also doing here as well is we're kind of hoping that this Pantheon won't react, which he doesn't. We blow him up in probably a second. And Panther's already jumping on an army under a turret and he flashes or whatever. Welcome to Diamond OCE, boys. 
But that's just another smart play on Shaco. Queuing from a safe place and just doing your regular combo and blowing him up. Okay, so using your Q here. It's not about your combo, it's using your Q effectively. Here, of course, we know this isn't watered out here, or hope it's not, but what I'm hoping is because, I'll pause it here, because most of our team is in their base, like maybe two or three members, they're all off respawn. So they've all died, I think was the context. So it's gonna be a 5v3 in their base, or so they think, 5v2, 5v3, in a matter of seconds, right? So this is why Elise, Hallucin, and Jin start playing aggressively. I know this, I anticipate this, and I'm like, fuck, if they move out of their turret range, I can queue over the wall and kill Jin, which is exactly what we do, and we end up getting Lucian as well at the end of this. All right, using your Q effectively, fam, and being smart, okay? This clip here, what is this clip? Let's have a, let's have a look. Okay, so this is the Cogmore mid clip, I think. Is this another one? Oh no, this is the Jinx mid clip. So once again, like even if we, even if we were behind, I'd still be making these plays. Yeah, you still have to play like an assassin. So here, I'm no Jinx is going to farm mid. I'm actually anticipating her to farm mid here because we see the midways are going to meet, and so one of them is going to farm mid. If it's Jinx, we get a kill. If not, we can just walk out because we last for five seconds. The spell lasts for five seconds, and we see here when these waves meet, we actually see Jinx, which makes it even better, and we queue over and we blow her up nice and easy. So this is all about just anticipating their movement, guys. Anticipating their carry. And all of them are ADCs, I think, in these clips. So, and maybe the Corky was a mid. But their Swishies, they're like mids and their ADCs. Those are the ones you guys want to go after, okay? So anticipate their movement and use your cue according to that, okay? Your anticipation, your prediction. Those, that's the key here, fam. Not the actual combo, not the fucking build or the crit or any of that. The key here is using your cue effectively in spots that probably aren't watered. So in lane is probably the biggest one, okay? And that's another tip. Also run a red uh, red sweeper as well to help you with that. Right, next one, number four, let's go. Right, fam, Ian Smite, number four. We're getting there. We're, we're fucking slowly getting there, okay? This is 30 minutes, I realize, guys, but hopefully it has been entertaining. I have structured it, I think, a lot better. Anyway, let's keep going. Let's not fucking, you know, self-aggrandize here. Now, E and Smite, so securing objectives, Baron and Drake, with your E, and then your Smite, using them successively, okay? I've only got one clip, because you guys probably already know this, it's pretty basic, but it's something that you should do consistently on Shaka, E and Smite, even if you're, even if there's no pressure on you to secure the, the Drake or Baron, just get used to it, inculcate it into your system, alright? So, let's watch the clip here, but this is obviously a steal, we've done many steals on, on Twitch, actually, I just couldn't... I think the ones that I had, the broadcasts were old, so I couldn't actually um, obviously watch them because they're not there anymore. But anyway, this is the most recent one. So we go over here, so we we shift the Baron, bloody Tim at it, and E, and then we smite as well to secure it against the Rammers, and we pick up a double kill, which is nice, okay? Beautiful. Right, number five, let's keep moving. Right, fam. We're on a fucking roll at the moment, aren't we? Assassin combo, okay, number five. Now, here I really just want to focus on, and I actually had it in the folder, the folded name, is using your E as late as possible, okay? So it's not actually about, you know, like going in, tear mat, whatever, you know, smite, you know, ignite, E. It's, it's pretty easy. The key here for me, now this is what I kind of used to say on stream to be informative, is your E on Shaco if you don't have blue smite, if you don't have a ball, is your only form of CC, apart from your box. But when you blow someone up, you don't really use the box. When you go in, your E is the only form of CC you have. So when you're against a champion with an escape, like an Ezreal, a Pate, a Lucian, or anyone like that, even like a ZW, something like that, they are fucking hard to track down. Even if you, even if you, you know, E them, they're still hard to get to. Right? So you have to use your E effectively. Don't use it Really, you have to kind of save it and wait for them. First of all, because it does more damage. I think I've said this before in the video. It's been a long night, and I've been doing this for like three hours now. So, in saying that, I would appreciate a like on the video and some feedback. Do you guys think that this structure, do you think me, com you know, I think I'm commentating with a bit more vigor, you know, a bit more enthusiasm this time, is better? Do you guys like it? So, if you guys do, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, comment on the head, whatever you guys want, okay? Anyway, so. I lost my train of thought. Using your E layer as possible. It does more damage when they're low, okay? And that's our only form of CC going this assassin build with Red Smite. It's the only form of CC we have. So, when we're against a Kate, a Lucian, and Ezreal, which is what you're normally against, which, you know, because we want to blow up the ADCs most, you're going to have to save that E. If you use it early and they E after you use it, they're going to be slowed for, I don't know, one, two seconds and they're out. Fine, especially if they have heal. 
they're hard as fuck to get to, you might blow a stamina or whatever. If we hold it as late as possible, it's just being, it's just giving us the biggest chance of killing them, okay? It acts as a gap close, so by slowing them, we can gap close, we can just run up to them. If we have balk, if we go balk as well, that's another thing, so you can E and then balk. But using your E as late as possible, fam, is the key here. So let's go through these clips. Now this is, uh, this is coming mid here, so this Twitch was actually fairly farmed. And I'm just coming mid here, so once again, queuing through lane, anticipating where the carry is going to be, and not. I know Nam is here. So we queue in here, and it's about using, look at the E. We haven't used it yet, because Nami comes, and I'm like, fuck, dude. You know, using our E now, we're not going to kill him. We use it as late as possible, get a bit lucky with the ultimate, but using that as late as possible, did a lot of DN, gave us a bit of a gap close even for the ultimate. Like, maybe even the ult doesn't even get him there, if we don't use the E, but it did, so... Typical example there fam, use your E as late as possible, here again we queue in lane, we see Caitlyn, but it's an easy kill, even if we don't have E we would have killed her here, but if she has her E which she did there, okay, and we used our E earlier in the combo, she probably lives on like 50 HP and might get away, okay, if her team's over that wall. So using our E, using your E as late as possible boys and girls is the key, alright, when you're comboing someone. Especially if it's like early on in the game, like maybe late game, you kind of just want to use everything as quick as possible because you'll have Shiv, IE, and whatever else. But especially in the mid game, it's a good habit to get into to try and save your E when you're trying to blow up an AUC. Especially if you know they have summoners. Like, like if you're if you're trying to blow up an Ezra, unless you're like ridiculous, you're probably not going to kill them if they have summoners. But in case they fuck up, you give yourself the biggest chance of killing them. Save that E, right? Now, number six and number seven, I might do these two. Intertwine the two of them using your art to deceive and dodge. So let's get into it fam Right fam number six. Let's go using your art to deceive now This is one of the cooler things you can do on Shaco. So the simple thing is here Is that when you queue onto someone now this normally happens if they have a like a form of CC like a Mauser heart ult is really good LeBlanc chain something like that you want them to waste that on your clone So the simple combo is you queue in and you press R while you're invisible and what will happen is your clone will appear and I reckon 95% of players will think that's you. That's the real you. The real demon jester. But they're deceived. Of course. Because it's not fucking you. It's your clone. So they'll use all your all their cooldowns on the clone. Okay? And because you're invisible, all you have to do is just walk up to behind them after that. Because they've used all their cooldowns on whatever, they'll be an easy kill. Okay? So this first kill on Lucian is just the perfect example of that. So we're just chilling in lane here or whatever. We see Lucian come into the lane through bot, through the bottom br uh, brush. Uh, uh, fuck it, fucking brush, right? It's getting fucking late, boys. And all we do is just Q past him, we ult, and he uses his exhaust on, his, on, on our clone. He still thinks that's us, and all we do, we just get an easy kill. So the guy got fucking played. But using your fucking R to deceive, okay? So we could have gone in then, just comboed him, R, and just gone on him. But we use our R, okay? And we stayed invisible for a second, and we let the R fucking take all the damage and act as us. Okay, so that was a nice example. Okay, let's get into the next one. Now, this one is actually for, this one really isn't for like a solo kill. This is actually for securing an objective. So you guys will see me, if I'm trying to steal a Baron or, or break or whatever, normally what I'll do is I'll queue over and I'll press R. What that does is, it, first of all, it normally just scares the fucking other team. Well, got, he's, he's just fucking appeared out of nowhere. But it also means that you guys can come in and you guys, it kind of acts as like a, um, almost like a shield kind of thing for, for the for the objective or whatever. And as you'll see in this clip, it actually scares them off the objective, which I thought was quite a nice play. So let's just fucking play it. So we queue over, we know they're doing it, we are, and because just sees us and runs straight away. Just runs out. And it just gives us a free, free Drake. Nice and easy. Okay. That was a nice example of that. Not using it in a, in a 1v1 situation, but using it for an objective. Okay. And the next one, which I thought was really cool when I did it. Um, so we're behind here. So this is another clip, fam. Okay. When you guys are behind, okay, try and make a fucking play. So this is risky me doing it. I could just be losing my ultimate for nothing here. But I'm like, look, let's just try and make a play. We've got no vision on Baron. I'm the only one like really here in the vicinity. So let's just try and make a play. So we press our R, get the, get the clone going in the bush here. We're going to send him out as like a kind of scout for Baron. And we see they're doing Baron here. We're going to bait LeBlanc and Twitch. And we actually move the ultimate there. Hopefully you guys saw that. In a way that I would move. And thankfully LeBlanc walks into the, into the box. We can blow her up nice and easy. And I thought that was honestly a really, really nice play. Like not many Shackers would have made that play. 
And especially like being AD, maybe if you're AP, you make that play with your client. But I just thought, let's just try and make a play. Let's use the the deceive. Called uh, the, the the ultimate is called deceive, of course. To just try and just try and bait something. Just try and get something happening here. And we ended up doing it, and it was a nice play. So using your ultimate guys, not to dodge something, not to dodge a skill shot, not to in this clip or or instance, not to one v one or try and. Uh, you know, to try and help you blow up someone. This is about wasting cooldowns, okay? Which the, fir which the first clip, sorry, was, and this clip. So LeBlanc using all that stuff and then running into us in the bush. Wasting their cooldowns to try and, you know, get a kill, get an objective, or just to make make a play, yeah? Okay? So nice little trick there at the end. Um, but those clips, I think, were, were really helpful in showing you guys how to use your ultimate to deceive. Right, last one, fam, and we're done, okay? You guys ready? Let's go. Let's, let's get fucking pumped. Guys, I am, I am fucking spent. Like, <laughs> I'm actually just fucking done, eh? I'm cooked at the moment. Right, okay. Let's get ready. The, gr the grand finale, mate. Let's go. Using your Isle of Dodge. Now, self-explanatory. really is. But the key here, okay, so there's normally like a key with all of these, these tricks and whatever, is anticipation, which seems to be the key with most of Shaka's stuff. The key to dodging like any skill shot, okay, it doesn't matter if you're playing Shaq or anyone, just dodging any skill shot generally is anticipating it. When you guys go and 1v1 a champion, you have to think to yourself, what is going to fuck me up here? What CC do they have that's going to fuck me up, right? For example, if I'm going into an Ariana, which I have a clip of, but it's in shit quality, so I didn't put it in. It was on one of my older streams, though, which unfortunately isn't. I'm um, just expired and I can't access it, obviously. If you're running into an Ariana and you won't be wanting her, what have you got to watch out for? Her? Ah, oh, of course. Because it can displace you and, you know, you can't fucking kill her or whatever. You've got to be thinking about that when you go in on anyone. So when I go in on J4, for example, what am I thinking of? EQ. When I go in on Gragas, I'm thinking E, ult, and Gragas has a lot. You've got to be thinking about these things. Yeah? Or if I go in on ADC, Caitlyn, for example, has a slow of her E. I've got to try and dodge her E, which you guys saw in one of the prior um, examples. Now, let's get into it anyway. So the first one here is just dodging uh, an Amumu Q. Uh, let me just uh, take the volume off that one. So dodging an Amumu Q here. So we obviously go in here. Now, I don't know, I don't think it was lucky. Like we saw him kind of stop and then we altered. Nice and easy, we picked up the triple kill because of it. I don't really need to tell you guys about it. It's just pressing R, but it's about anticipating what they're gonna do, okay? That's really the key here, fam. The next one is dodging an Ash ult. Now, one thing I will say, actually, I'm going to pause it here. One thing I will say that when you go on an ADC, they're normally going to, or anyone, they're normally going to use their CC probably after like a second. Like, you can kind of tell that, like, that, that, like they'll change their pathing. They've suddenly just fucking realized, shit, that goes on me. I've got to do something. I've got to use my CC. I've got to flash here or whatever. That's normally the time to press fucking R. Okay? First of all, it's better being safe than sorry. You don't want to use it too late, so you do it. But you don't want to use it too early. So I think after that, like one second, you know, after that initial burst, yeah, especially mid game, that's when they think, fuck, you know, I've got to use it. You saw the Caitlyn clip bot lane when she, uh, you know, used her E or whatever. Oh no, it may, may have been the previous clip. But anyway, you've got to use your R when you think they're going to do it. You've got to anticipate it. All right, that's the key. So when I go on an Ash here, I'm thinking, what's well, going to fuck us up? It's our ultimate, and we dodge it. Okay, nice clip. Next clip uh, is a Caitlyn, actually. Okay, this is this is the clip, sorry. So this is a clip uh, from, uh, this was actually before we killed her, which I showed in a previous clip. Anyway, so we see here, we just go in and we think, what's, what's gonna fuck us up here is that E, so we press R and we dodge her E nice, and she actually ends up flashing because of it as well, okay? So here we come mid, we see Alistair here, we see Ash as well. What's gonna fuck us up? It's Ash's ult and Alistair's art. Now, as you can see, she's half health. She's at the same health that the other Ash in the other game was when she ulted me. Now, I'm not sure if she had it here, but I'm thinking, okay, that's one form, and the other form is at Alice's W. Q, sorry. But we dodge his Q, first of all, because our box blocks his, blocks his um, W, because he obviously can't W. And his Q missed us, okay? And it would have missed us because we ulted, okay? So you guys have got, always got to be thinking when you're going in, because what's the point of like going in and you know, like if you have an opportunity to kill someone, you want to give yourself the best chance of doing it. So using your art of dodge is very, very important. And here is a nice one we dodge at least as we can, and we pick up a double kill because of it. I don't need to show the rest, of it, but you guys are going to have to trust me or check out one of the stream highlights videos, boys and girls, to watch it. 
And here is a nice easy one. Now this is obviously like pretty easy because you can see Hecarim doing it. The animation takes ages. We just dodges um dodges ultimate nice and easy with the kill. So typical examples there, guys, of using your R to dodge shit because in most of those situations, especially if it's hard CC, they will prevent you from getting kills in most situations. So using your ultimate, using your whole kit is very very important on Shaco. Okay? And because we're going assassin, because we're going this kind of squishy but high damage build, if we get caught by CC, we're fucked. Okay? We're fucked, which is why Shaco isn't that good at the moment. Okay? And which is also why the Bruiser Shaco build, in my opinion, is the safer build and probably, you know, will win you more games. Safer build to go, more reliable or whatever. But this Assassin build does work for them and hopefully these guys, the two parts, I know this video is probably going to be 45 minutes long, but hopefully it was justified. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Alright, seriously though guys, thanks for watching. I had to cut myself off here because I went on like a fucking five minute rant. I want this video to end as soon as possible because it is 45 minutes. Anyway, if you guys did enjoy it, guys, please leave a like. This took a lot of time, a lot of energy. I've been, it's now 1am. I've been doing this since fucking like 9.30. So it took a lot of time and I tried to do this as best as I could structure-wise and whatever. And hopefully it paid off. Hopefully you guys did enjoy this. This was hopefully, I, I mean, I honestly think this was the best part of the series. Showing you guys the mechanics of Shaco and how to play him mechanically. Like a, like a high ELO player, I guess. So hopefully, you guys are now going to turn into fucking Shaco Masters, alright? I want you guys commenting what you thought of the series, if it helps you. You know, I, I know I get comments on stream all the time saying, you know, your videos help me go from silver to gold on Shaco. I love your videos. I, I want to learn Shaco. I'm now learning them. Those comments mean a lot, guys, so please keep them coming. Um, and yeah, as I said, if you guys like the video, please give it a thumbs up. And follow us on Twitch, of course, because that's where we'll be streaming, hopefully, most nights when we get the new internet in, but we are streaming most nights now, so there won't be any change there. But yeah, guys, if you did enjoy it, please give it a thumbs up and please share it or whatever. Leave leave constructive criticism and some feedback. All right, guys, remember, remember the Twitch, and uh, we'll see you in the next bit. Thanks for watching.